Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share my last design team project for Top Flight Stamps. And I use this adorable little pug stamp to create three casts or clean and simple cards. And I just wanted to share with you guys the whole process. I thought this pug stamp from Carabelle Studios and the stamp set is called To Be or Not To Be was so darn cute. The little wrinkles on his forehead, the hipster glasses. I mean, he's just so full of personality that I didn't think he needed much else. So I decided to go very clean and simple and create these really fun cards that I hope will bring smiles to people's faces when they receive them. So first of all, this first card that I used, I used a little bit of plastic that I wanted to test out where the stamp would be stamping out. I'm using a Misty tool, but I wanted the card to just have just above the glasses of the puppy. So I am using that plastic just to test out exactly where the image would be stamped. And yes, that's exactly where I wanted the positioning. So I'm gonna remove the plastic cover there. I'm trying to be careful so that I don't shift the cardstock underneath. And now I know that when I stamp this pug dog out onto this card front, just above the eyeglasses is where it gets stamped out. And I wanted this little peekaboo kind of uh, look for this uh, image. And I thought it would be super cute just to have this puppy dog peeking over the front edge of that card front. And for the sentiment, I thought it would be really cute to use uh, just popping up to say, and that's the sentiment from the neat and tangled out of the box stamp set. It's retired, but you can still find it in some shops and I will put a link in the description box below, not only to the Carabel Studios little pug stamp, but to the other stamp sets that I use for these cards for the sentiments. And the inside liner is getting a simple happy birthday exclamation point, which is also from that neat and tangled out of the box stamp set. And it's just, again, really clean and simple. I wanted to add some color to this image, especially because it's so small and it's just a partial image. So I'm gonna do some really quick Copic coloring. I laid down a base with the really pale E51, and then I'm adding some shadowing with an E53. And I'm just following the lines of the image. And then for the ears and around the muzzle, I'm using a W5, also around the eyes to really deepen that warm gray look. Uh, and then also around the edges of the glasses. Now I'm going back in and blending back out, con connecting the dark gray or the mid-tone gray and that pale E51 with that E53. It kind of bridges that. Then I thought I would give the glasses a little blue tinge. I didn't want it to be blue blue and I wanted the color of the pug to show through. So I used a B41. And now I'm using a Uniball Signo White gel pen to add some reflective kind of glare light on the glass of the eyeglasses. And I think that that adds a nice little detailed look. I'm gonna just use my ATG gun to add some adhesive to this card front. And I decided I was gonna use a black card base uh, just because I wanted the inside liner to have that little frame around it. The whole front of the card is completely covered because I wanted it to be really clean and simple, have that really crisp white look all around that image. And that's one of the signatures of cast cards is to have a lot of white space. And as you can see here, I left a little black border all the way around the inside liner. Now with a Sakura black glaze pen, and I did this intentionally after I put the card front on the card base, I'm just outlining the glasses, the frame of the glasses with this glaze pen so that it gets a little bit of shine and also a tiny bit of dimension. The glaze pen kind of gives, well, exactly what the name says. It gives a little glazed look to it. And I thought that that little bit of dimension and shine would be a nice addition to make the glasses stand out. I also decided to fill in the glass area with Ranger glossy accents. Now that gives a really high shine and I'm just trying to be careful so that I don't um, accidentally touch the 
frame area with the glaze. And that's the finished card. I think it came out super cute. This is the inside of the card. As you can see, I kept it really clean and simple inside and out. Now for the second card, I decided I was gonna try and keep this really, really simple. I didn't even wanna color this. So I decided I was going to use heat embossing and I'm using a Versamark ink pad and I'm gonna just stamp the dog's head completely uh, right in the upper third quadrant of the card front. And I'm using a coffee filter to catch my excess and I'm using Ranger Super Fine embossing powder in black. I need a little bit more on that left side of his ear and I'm brushing off the excess and recapturing all the excess powder back from the coffee filter into the jar and I can set that aside. I'm gonna heat it with my heat tool on the front and on the back so that the paper or the card stock doesn't warp too much. I'm heating it again. You can kind of see the embossing powder melting there in the light. I'm again, making sure that I'm keeping the heat tool moving so I don't scorch the paper. And now I decide I'm gonna add a sentiment from the Mama Elephant uh, in my heart stamp set. I thought the missing you or miss you more than just a little sentiment was perfect for this, you know, concerned little puppy. Uh, he, I love the little wrinkles on his forehead and I just for some reason thought that that would go so perfectly with this sweet sentiment. I also love how the miss you is in this pretty script and the rest of the sentiment more than just a little is in this really tight uh, kind of up and down print. And again, I just heat emboss that and I decided I wanted just a little bit of color. So I'm taking my Adirondacks Brights Watermelon Pigment Ink and I'm just stamping out a little heart. And that actually helps balance out the sentiment because I thought it was a little bit over to the left, at least the miss, the curly Q of the M from miss extended to the left a bit. So I wanted the right to have that same balance. So that red heart did the trick. And with pigment ink, the ink takes a little while to dry so you can use embossing powder. And I'm just using a little bit of clear embossing powder to make that little heart shine. So it matches well with the little puppy. Now I decided I really wanted a little more color. The heart was great, but I thought that adding red glasses would be even better. So I'm using that same watermelon ink and I'm stamping it out on a scrap of cardstock. And then I'm gonna fussy cut out those glasses. And I'm taking care, I'm using my favorite scissors, which are the Fiskars spring-loaded scissors. And I'm gonna fussy cut all around the glasses. And of course, because I don't want the inside of the glasses to be, you know, stamped with those red eyes, I am going to take an X-Acto blade and cut out the whole interior lens part of these glasses. And I do it both on the left and the right. I'm just taking my time. This ends up being a really delicate piece, actually. So uh, you want to make sure when you're doing this kind of X-Acto blade cutting that your blade is very sharp. Now I'm going to just take that glasses and make sure I get a good coverage of that watermelon ink. I need to do it a little bit more. I'm just using a scrap piece of paper to make sure I get good coverage there as I push it into the ink pad. And now I'm taking some UT. It's also the same kind of thing. It's a little thicker, uh, clear embossing powder. And I'm going to emboss those glasses so that they get a really nice high shine. Now that's all done and I'm putting some wet glue onto the back of these glasses and having that, uh, my favorite wet glue, the art glitter glue with the extra fine nozzle tip made that perfectly fit over the top of the glasses that were on the black uh, embossed glasses. And that's the second card. The third card I decided I'm gonna use the puppy's head and tilt it and have it look like it's popping up from the lower right corner. And I just wanted to get a good impression so I'm stamping it out a couple of times. And then I'm taking a Copic multi-liner pen and I'm just gonna doodle the body so that it, the head doesn't look like it's just floating. And again, this is really simple, simple uh, doodling. Now I'm gonna take a finer point, the first, pen that I used was a 0.1 point, 
and this is a 0.03 point, so it's really tiny. And I'm just trying to match the kind of textured look of the pug dog's face uh, with the pug dog's body. So I'm adding in really fine little dot details to add the look of shading. And that's how the stamped image looks. If you look at the image around the edges, around the muzzle, you'll see some really fine dot details. And I wanted the body to obviously look like it was a continuation of the same image and not have it look like, you know, the body is just, you know, stick figure kind of lines. So um, doodling that with a both fine uh, tip Copic multiliner pens really helped make that look continuous. For the sentiment, I'm using a Gerda Steiner uh, how are you stamp set and uh the first sentiment on the front of the card says so sorry i forgot and then the inside says happy birth happy belated birthday and you see me stamping it out here and i didn't like the way that looked so i'm gonna try it again and now i'm gonna do happy birthday on one line and then belated kind of askew and above it and I like that much better because now I get a chance to doodle a little carrot symbol with a red uh, ultra fine Sharpie marker. And I think that looks, you know, like it adds a little whimsy somehow to it. And I'm just going to position that inside as the card liner. And then the front of the card gets that little pug dog popping in saying, so sorry, I forgot. And now I decided I'm going to color up this pug as well. I'm using basically the same colors other than I'm adding a W7 to bring in a little bit darker shading on this one. And uh, you see me just laying down the base color and then I'm going to add in some shading with the E53 over top following along the image lines, wherever there are wrinkles, I want to add a little bit of shading, uh, which makes sense, right? If it's an indentation or a valley, like those little wrinkles would be, they would be darker. And then I'm trying to blend back out. My marker is running out here. So off camera, I end up actually refilling that marker and I'm letting it equalize while I color in the tongue with the R27. And then I go around the muzzle and the ears with the W7, adding little darker areas. I did it initially with a W5, but I wanted it to be a little bit darker. Uh, I also want to make sure that the nose gets a nice, good coating. And I decide I'm going to add more shadowing. So I'm using a W5 to go into some of those deepest wrinkles around the eyes, uh, by the neck roll. <laughs> and then I go back in with the E53 to kind of blend that uh, warm gray with that pale E51. And now I am going back in and blending again with the E51, which I had refilled and let equalize off to the side. And now I decide I'm going to add a little bit of darker coloring around the eyes and nose again. And then finally, as a little top coat to the glasses, I again add B41. And again, I wanted to make sure it got that reflective look with those little hash lines with the white jelly or gel pen. This is a Uniball Signo pen. And I decide I want to reemphasize the eyes and reemphasize the highlight in that nose as well. And that's the third card. And this is the inside of that third card. Again, I kept everything really clean and simple. I hope you enjoyed this process video, my last for Top Flight Stamps. Thank you so much for watching and encouraging me with your sweet comments. If you're interested in this little Carabel Studios pug stamp, please check out Top Flight Stamps. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.